What's cracking, everyone? This is the Mile High Hustle. Thank you for tapping in. Remember to hit the like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell notification for all future content. Without further ado, let's get into the story about Marvin Gray, the most infamous and violent prisoner in Colorado to date. Under ordinary circumstances, what happened on October 30th at the Denver County Courthouse would have been just that ordinary. One inmate has words with another, a fight ensues, blood is spilled, deputies intercede, the fight is done. What sets this particular event apart is that it involved Marvin Gray, the most infamous and violent offender in Colorado to date. And the last time somebody made the mistake of putting him in another cell with somebody, it cost the state over $70,000. At six foot one, 275, Gray is intimidating to say the least. Covered in head to toe in tattoos, the one-time Department of Corrections state lifting champion reveals his ability to beat, bully, conquer, and assault anyone who comes in his contact. In a statement made to a reporter, Gray states, what I've done would make a grown man sit up straight at, in his bed at night and break out in cold sweat. Gray, having spent most of his time behind bars, has done time for robbery, numerous assaults, and in 1985 he was convicted of the second degree murder of a stabbing death of a woman found along the banks of the Cherry Creek River. In 1997, while he was doing time for that murder, Gray was charged with his first prison assault. Although there is no investigating reports on this matter, the DOC does not deny that it took place. Paroled on the murder charge in 1991, he immediately skipped town. The following year, he was arrested for armed robbery. The conviction in that case was enough to have him declared a habitual offender, which in the state of Colorado means life in prison. In this case, the judge gave Gray three life sentences. In November of 1992, Gray was charged with killing a fellow inmate. He was in a holding cell with Daniel Green at the federal courthouse in Denver, Colorado. When Gray recognized him, whom he believed to be an informant in a drug case, Gray, however, was acquitted of the murder. Denver Police Lieutenant John Priest says it is his understanding that the jury believed the guard shared responsibility for simply placing Green in Gray's cell. Despite Gray's prison record, Prison officials apparently didn't see anything wrong with double bunking him with other inmates. And in July of 1993, Great beat, knocked unconscious, and assaulted his 27-year-old cellmate. And less than a week later, Gray was assigned yet another cellmate, who he beat, choked, unconscious, and assaulted as well. Gray was then sent to CSP, Colorado State Penitentiary, also known as the Colorado Shoe, locked down for 23 hours a day. But one of Gray's victims decides to strike back in October of 1993, filing suit against five prison officials claiming they had put his life in danger by placing him in the cell with a known offender. The case slugged through the courts until the past spring when the state agreed to pay the victim over $70,000. And although the state did not meet any liability, the payment was based on claims that DOC prison officials showed callous indifferences as they placed the victim in the cell with Gray. Gray was then classified as at seg, administrative segregation, meaning he should never be placed in a cell with anyone. With such prisoners, they are moved. They are supposed to be in leg shackles, handcuffs, and belly chains. When they are transported, they ride in vans with the armed chase team following behind them. And their transport files are supposed to contain in-depth information that the receiving institution knows how to handle them, says Allison Morgan, Director of Public Affairs for the DOC. But when Gray went to Denver for sentencing reconsideration hearing on October 30th, 1993, the DOC didn't bring him up from Canyon City. For some reason, that responsibility fell to the Denver Sheriff's Department, Morgan said. Maybe it had to do with how fast the Denver courts needed him. Maybe they had other prisoners to pick up as well. Transport files are not required in such instances. Nor one was provided to the Sheriff's de deputies who picked up Gray, Morgan says. But deputies did know to be careful with Gray, confirmed Sheriff's spokesperson Daryl Brown. Gray was brought to the Denver County Jail and placed in solitary confinement. All precautions were taken while he remained in the facility. But when Gray was moved from the jail to the courthouse, I think that's where the mix-up occurred and where we housed him. Brown says, we went over there and somehow the wires got crossed. 
Ray was put in a cell with a man named James Gilbertson who was awaiting trial on a case involving an assault on a child. According to deputies, Gray started beating Gilbertson by throwing him to the ground and punching him numerous times before the su suspect was ordered off the victim. Gray, Gilbertson in an incident report said, suffered a bloody nose and a laceration under his white eye which required stitches. Gray was charged with third degree assault. He asked for a jury trial. David Lane, an attorney for one of Gray's victims in a suit against the state, thinks Gilbertson should also sue. Marvin Gray seems to be a, a killing machine, Lane says. Everybody in the world is on notice that Marvin Gray should not be housed with anyone else. Sheriff officials would not comment on the incident, they said, because it is still under investigation. But whether Gray will get his day in court is questionable. At a November 6 hearing on the assault, sheriff deputies asked that Gray remain in his holding cell rather than being brought to the courtroom. In a statement made to the judge, the last time he was up here, Your Honor, he smashed another prisoner's head against the wall. A plea of not guilty was entered on Gray's behalf by his lawyers. Whatever happens, the deputies will have a long time with Gray as their guest. Last week, he copped to an unsolved 1975 murder of a man in Denver, Joseph Diller, who was shot in his car in the fall of 1975 after apparent robbery on Larmer Street. The confession means that Gray will remain here in the Denver County Jail until prosecutors decide to file charges or not. Lane thinks that by admitting to another murder, Gray is looking for a way out, the hardest way out. I think he wants the death penalty, he says. I do believe that is what he's looking for. So there you have it, fellas. Just another look into this violent murdering machine. Uh, he used to take people's cheeks. And if you know him in Colorado, he's a folklore prison history boogeyman, so to speak. Um, I've heard inmates talk about his power and strength like no other. Um, a statement made by my friend Manuel Gamboa says that he believes Gray is the devil and that's how strong he is. We're talking a man who benches over 500 pounds himself. So with that being said, this is a look into Marvin Gray, most infamous prisoner in Colorado state history. Touchback base where we go back into his life and his childhood and shows what made this killing machine. Again, this is the Mile High Hustle. Thank you for tapping in and I'm out.